Hello and welcome back to the series of YouTube videos covering my 2022 coaster project. Today I wanted to start going over some of the CAD design or 3D modeling that went into my design and specifically I wanted to talk about this or the wheel bogey, um, also known as the wheel assembly. It holds the wheels of the train together so that it can actually wrap around the track and hold the train on the rails during the layout. Um, so I designed everything in Fusion 360. Um, so everything here I modeled myself. Um, it's a very simple model. Uh, I could have made it a lot more complex. However, because I'm going to be 3D printing this design, I wanted to keep it to a minimal number of parts so that I don't have to worry about assembling um, 10 different wheel bogies uh, with 50 different parts on each different assembly. I just wanted to make it simple so that I can just have a limited number of parts because there's already going to be plenty of them. Um, so this is my final model. Uh, I do have previous designs. Um, so for my first design, I mainly just stuck to the ver very minimal um, assembly where I have six wheels and I have a main frame that holds the wheels together and two different external parts that will mount to one side of the wheels to hold them in place. Um, then I use staples and paper clips to actually assemble that in my first model. However, later on, um, I hope to still use paper clips because they're a very cheap way of having an axle for the wheels but the staples were too flimsy and way too thin to do anything with, so I'll have to use paper clips for those as well. But in the later models, I also used more hardware. So you can see up at the top here, I have a black insert, which is going to be nylon. Um, that's just to make it easy for the bogey to actually rotate on the pitch axis. Um, I have a placeholder for a bolt. I have some washers that I'm not sure if I'm going to keep in the future um, assembly, but um, I modeled all of this in CAD so that I can get a picture of what it's going to look like. Um, so I'll start from the beginning. Uh, I initially uh, began by designing the wheels themselves. Um, so I started with the rail, and then from there, I went on to design all six wheels to try and image or try and imagine how it's going to look. Um, rather than start with the frame, I wanted to start with the wheels because that's going to be the actual functional part of this model. So I wanted to be able to have that from the start rather than having to um, work it out later on on, oh, this doesn't really match because this main frame has the wrong geometry. I would rather have the frame be designed off of where the wheels need to go rather than design where the wheels need to go based on the, the frame. Um, so I've done that before. I wanted to avoid that for this project and that's what I did here. So I began with the wheels, worked backwards from there to try and figure out the main frame. Um, so I began by first having the size of each wheel um, done. And then from there, I was able to mirror that over for the upstops. Uh, by the way, I should clarify the top two are known as the road wheels. They take the main force of the train. Um, the side wheels are known as guide wheels. They just guide the train on um, the sides of the track as if you were driving a car. And then the wheels on the bottom are known as the upstops. Those are just there to keep the train on the track when it drops down or when there's zero gravity or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna be using those phrases to reference these um, wheels in the future. But I created the uh, sides of each of the wheels and then just use simple mirrors and patterns to try and copy them over. And then from there, I was able to connect all of those together with some simple extrusions. Um, from there, I was able to simply uh, kind of fine tune it to make sure that it would be good to 3D print. I added some fillets um, to add more material so it doesn't fall apart when printing. Um, and then 
as I went further into the process, I created the external pieces, which are going to mount on the outside. Um, those will just make sure that the uh, road wheels and upstop wheels are in place and make it easier to mount them in, into the assembly. Um, then from there, uh, just like the uh, main cover up top for the road wheels, I did the same for the upstop wheels at the bottom. And then I, from there, it was just fine tuning. Um, so I, after the first prototype, I, after the first prototype, I realized that I needed some hardware to actually mount it in place because I didn't want to use super glue. Um, initially, I was planning to use super glue to mount all these pieces in place so I didn't have to buy any hardware, but I quickly realized if I need to change something out or if I want to swap out the wheels with something else, it would be really difficult to put them back in place. So I just went with the simple option of using screws so I can screw it in or unscrew it as needed, replace pieces when I need to, um, and it made it a lot easier in the future prototypes. Um, then that essentially just brings it to the current model. Um, after I put in those holes for the screws, I just modeled their placeholders and that's about it. Uh, it took a bit to find where I should place all those, um, but that leaves it with the current model. I'm still working on the wheels. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this design or change it up a bit. Um, I think that kind of comes for, I'm going to leave that for when I deal with the track a bit more, um, because I haven't finalized the track design yet. I don't want to finalize the wheels because they... Um, they work together in order to create a smooth ride for the train. They work together in terms of friction and a whole bunch of other things. So I kind of want to leave that alone for now and work on it later. Um, and I will definitely b make a YouTube video covering that when that eventually happens. Um, but that's it for the design of the wheels. Um, from there, uh, going forward, I was able to design the rest of the train. I connect, I connected them with a yaw axle um, on the front and back. Um, you can see underneath that there is an axle connecting the two. Um, and that has a set limit of how wide it is or how uh, thin I'll make it. Again, it all depends on the track, so it may change later on. Um, and I'll cover it in future videos. But... Just for this video, I wanted to cover how I came up with the limitations on how my car can rotate, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, the way I plan on having this is with a fixed axle between the wheels, meaning that they'll always have a fixed width, um, and that allows me to find the limits of the bogies themselves. So I wanted to find two main um two main limitations, and that's in the pitch axis, or up and down, and the yaw axis, which is left and right. Um, so that mainly just uses the uh, guide wheels on the sides for the yaw axis. However, the pitch axis requires both the, up, the upstops and the road wheels. So if I look at this dead on from one of the sides, you can see the placeholders that I have. These two lines here represent what the rail would be. Um, and I've simply made them tangent to the wheels here. Um, they overlap a little bit, but that's only because right now I have curve on my wheels to wrap around the rails a bit more. Um, I may have to come back to this later when I uh, fix the track, but that's for another day. Um, but that's why it's overlapping right now. Um, but I have a set width here. Um, right now I'm going with four millimeters, assuming that I'm going to use four millimeter diameter uh, rails. And it wasn't really high tech. <laughs> uh, really all I did was um, I inputted random numbers for a radius and I see where it overlaps with the wheels. So I can see that if I go with like a 40 uh, millimeter radius, that's going to be more than enough space. There's plenty of gap between the upstops and the rail itself, um, which means that there's going to be enough space for the car to actually rotate. Um, 
or to articulate along the track. But if I go to something like 15 millimeters, you can see it overlaps way too much, and I know that's not going to work. Um, so it was just a bunch of trial and error of trying to see where it overlaps, where it doesn't. And um, eventually I found out that around 20 millimeters, it is just enough that it does not overlap with the inner curve of the wheel. Um, so 20 is obviously really tight. Um, the bogies do not represent the actual limitations of the train um, because the arc is going to be different between all four of these bogies as opposed to just a single one like in this model, um, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, it's essentially the same process. However, uh, it's a bit more geometry that you have to worry about. Um, and I can cover that in another video as well. Um, but then for the yaw axis, it's the same exact thing. Um, so because I have a fixed width of the track um, with the, or not of the track, but a fixed width between the bogies, it means that I can find what the limitation is for the yaw axis as well. Okay, so for the yaw axis, um, it's slightly different. Um, it's the same exact process, however, the pivot point is going to be based from the center of the four guide wheels rather than just a singular bogey. So you can see I came up with a cross here. Um, that's simply to find the midpoint and draw a line straight out from there on where the actual radius would be. Um, so I I realize now that uh, my radius is slightly off. Um, this is based off of the inner rail rather than the center between the two um, bogies. Um, but it's the same exact process. I would just have to find different dimensions. Um, because the track width is going to be constant, I don't have to worry about that. Um, this dimension up here is just a function based off of the other dimension. Um, that just makes sure that the width is constantly the same. Um, and again, I made it tangent to one of the guide wheels. And by just trying to put in different values, I can see how much it overlaps with the other side. So I can see if it's a 50 meter curve or 50 millimeter curve, um, it has a bit of a gap there versus if I take a 15 millimeter curve, it overlaps way too much. Um, so again, it's the same exact process just dealing with different wheels um, when referencing them to each other. Um, and that's essentially it. That's how I created the bogies. Um, and that is how I also found the limitations of it. So in the final design, um, again, I've added some screws here, um, or bolts, sorry. Those are going to hold it together. So these two screws here just hold on to the uh, covers on the or the external covers on the other side to hold the road wheels and upstops in place. This bolt here will hold on to the uh, the axle, so that holds it to the actual train. Uh, the staples here, those act as axles for the wheels themselves, so those will go through the covers and then onto the main assembly. Um, I don't know yet whether I'm going to be gluing those in place or if I'm going to be or if I'm going to be bending them to keep them um, where I want. Um, and then that is essentially the whole bogey assembly. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, I did go through multiple models to get to this point. Um, so you can see that I have the initial prototype. Uh, this was the first one that I printed and I simply bent the staples and um, paper clips into place to actually keep it there. Um, you can actually see if you look closely that I have 3D printed placeholders for the um, spacers on the inside to keep the wheels centered to the actual gap. Um, however, those I didn't want to use. It's way too complicated to actually assemble this. Um, and then it 
really it's really flimsy so i had to beef up the staples and they were turned to paper clips in future models then the next design uh that's the one where you can start to see the screws come in um however i did kind of strip it for parts in future uh assemblies of it uh, the third design, that's when I actually started to um, finalize what you can see today. Uh, so you can see the staples that I bent into place, or not staples, I used paper clips for those, but I bent them into place. Um, and I sort of raised the uh, road wheels a bit so that it rode a bit um, lower. Um, because the central point where the whole bogey pivots up at the top, I want that lower down so that the train isn't as high up from the track. Um, the higher it is, the more the track actually has to rotate in um, a unique way for what's known as the heart line or the center of the riders on the train. Um, so I want that to be a bit lower, and in the third design, you can sort of see me start to lower the um, main pivot point so the train rides lower. And then you can also see that I made the gap larger up at the top so that I can insert the nylon um, part. Um, then in the fourth prototype, I think that is the current model. Um, I haven't... That is the, sorry about that. Uh, the fourth prototype is the current model. Um, I did modify it slightly, uh, but I haven't printed the newer parts yet. Um, but the newest model is essentially what's on the train. Um, and that is, it doesn't have any wheels on it yet, but I plan on doing that in the near future. So that covers the wheel bogey assemblies. Um, I know this was a long video. I don't mean for other videos to go this long, um, but I really enjoy talking about this. I really enjoy modeling it and doing this whole project. Uh, and I really like sharing it with everyone as well. So I hope you enjoyed and hope maybe you learned something along the way. Um, if you do want to start your own project, you can follow along with me. Um, I'm still learning the process, so uh, we can do it together. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for future videos.